Good Saturday morning, everyone. I'm out bright and early for a busy day for us today. So I have all of my seven rows assembled. And so I'm hoping that by lunchtime, I can have this whole center piece of this quilt assembled. I still need to press my rows or press all the seams in the rows. And I like to nest my seams. And so, for example, this row, I'll press all my seams to the right. That row, I'll press all my seams to the left, to the right, to the left, and so on. And so that when I'm joining these rows together, the seams nest and fit and lock in and everything seems to work really well that way. Now I know it varies from quilter to quilter. In my experience, and what I have found to be the strongest for me is when I press my seams in one direction to the right or to the left versus pressing my seams open. To me, I have found that in my quilts, that seems to give me a stronger seam. And I think you might be able to argue both sides <laughs> pretty well. I know lots and lots of quilters who press their seams open and never have had an issue. And so I think it comes down to personal preference maybe. And maybe if you are doing a quilt where you want your seams to be really, really flat, then pressing them open might be the best way to go. But I always press to one side or to the other. And so this quilt, I'm going to nest my seams, pressing them in opposite directions from row to row. So by lunchtime, I'm hoping to have all of these seven rows together. And that will be my day in the shop because after lunch, swing you around here. Harlan is just as busy as he can be first thing this morning. After lunch, I'm going to paint the trim on this middle building because that could really use a coat of paint. So we have a long, busy day in the Capon household, <laughs> preparing our house for the new owners, probably doing some things that we should have done in the five years that we've lived here. <laughs> but, so that'll get new paint on those doors today. Wish me luck on that top one. <laughs> I don't wanna fall and get hurt, but I should be fine. So I'll check back with you. Look how pretty it is today. Those storms came through yesterday and last night. And it is so nice today and it's not humid. There's a nice breeze blowing. Everything is so green. It's so pretty. So I'm going to have my door open. And I'm going to swing you back around. And uh, finish sewing together this quilt. The middle of it. Monday we're going to be working on the borders. And I'm really excited to get to that part and to share that part with you. We're adding photos and all kinds of t-shirt logos. And so, yeah, Monday is, is really going to be an interesting video. Probably the videos after Monday, too. <laughs> okay, so I'm off to thread another bobbin this morning and start sewing. I was sitting here pressing the seams on this first row. And do you ever have conversations with yourself? <laughs> Oops, I dropped my cloth. Do you ever have conversations in your head while you're doing something? I was thinking, you know, I have so many experienced sewers and quilters on my channel. But I also have tons of people who have never made a quilt before. And they're just learning and watching videos and growing their knowledge. And I was thinking about some of the first quilts that I ever made. And I always, in my mind, because pressing is so tedious. I don't know many quilters who enjoy pressing their seams. Hold on a second. I'm going to switch rows and come right back. I don't know many quilters who actually enjoy this part of making a quilt <laughs> because it's tedious. And I always turn on a podcast or a tutorial of some sort or some music just to help pass the time while I'm doing this. 
And I was thinking back to some of the first quilts that I made in the very beginning, years and years ago, when I thought, why am I doing this? And is it really necessary? And I think I will not press my seams as I make my quilt and I'll save myself so much time. And now, looking back at those quilts, they're still very, very lovely. I love those quilts. I only personally have one of those quilts, and everybody else in the family got the rest of them, but I have one. And looking at that one, as much as I love that quilt, am I still recording? Hold on a second, I'm going to plug you in. Because the screen went dark. The joys of making a video. Oh, yep, you're still there. Okay, where was I? As lovely as that quilt is, now with years of experience, I can see the flaws in it. Of course, I won't point them out to anyone, but I can see them. And I can see that I did not press my seams as I was constructing that quilt. And it made a difference. And you can see a difference in the quilts that I make now because now I press my seams. And so... If you are wondering how necessary it is to press your seams, I'm going to be 100% transparent and say, you know what, you really don't have to. But if you want to take your quilt to a whole nother level from being pretty and great to wow and fantastic, then I think the difference would be not pressing your seams as you go and pressing your seams. So I just thought that was a conversation I was having in my mind. And I just thought I would share that because I know I've always wondered, you know, why, why am I doing this? <laughs> it takes so much time and it's kind of boring. And is it necessary? And each quilt I make, I have to remind myself it's absolutely necessary Especially since I'm making quilts on commission, this quilt is going to someone else. And she's paying me very good, hard-earned money for this quilt. And that would be uh, a huge difference if I didn't go through this step and do this. I think it would really show in the results of her quilt. And so that's just me having a conversation in my head that I'm going to share with you. In case you've ever wondered the same thing or you're absolutely brand new and you're just checking out and learning from videos on YouTube that's just my two cents is yes take the extra time you will be amazed at the results that it makes and the difference so here's this pressed seam before we begin attaching the rows and let me pull over this next row that I'm going to do, which actually <laughs> is not going to prove my point very much. It looks pretty. However, when you start to sew this together to the next row, it's going to be bumpy and lumpy. And if you have any parts of your seam, yeah, like right here, it's on the correct way, but there's a small little uh, wrinkle here. When you press the seam, that goes away. And so when you attach the next row, there's not going to be any possibility for you to mess up the seam. So, again, just a conversation I was having in my head that I thought I'd pass along to you. Uh, I recommend pressing your seams as you go. We are back. It is early, early afternoon on Saturday. I just finished sewing the center of this quilt together so you can see how well everything came together it is still quite long although it shrunk a few inches not very many <laughs> so you can see this is going to be a fairly large size quilt so let me pause this for a second and I'll show you uh, what I just did okay before I stopped for today I wanted to go ahead and get a jump on my Monday morning so all of the remaining shirts that you see lined up here on my bar are the shirts that are going to make up 
the side borders and the top and bottom. So I've separated them into the top border, the right border, the bottom border, and the left border. And I tried to keep the logos, a lot of these shirts, the backs of the shirts are in the body of the quilt and she wanted to try to keep the front chest logos with the back of the shirts if possible and so I've preliminarily <laughs> separated those according to the layout that's on the wall and if we can do that I would love to be able to keep those together it might end up being that we have to modify some of that because we changed some of the layout for those larger blocks on the top and then I went through the photos and you can see because I get to share the photos a lot of the photos you'll recognize the shirts that they are wearing in the quilt like that's that shirt right there so I'm thinking looking at her diagram that she wants to try to keep the photos uh, close to the coordinating shirts if possible so we're going to try to accommodate that as well and we have some wiggle room to play with because let's see this is her diagram we have eight inches we can work with on each of the sides the top she wanted 12 inches up at the top and the bottom we have another eight inches so we're going to have plenty of wiggle room. We can work all this in if we can. And uh, so, yes, I'm excited for Monday. That's what we're going to be doing on Monday is starting all of these little small pieces that make up the borders. Okay, I'm off to get some paint from Lowe's and start painting. <laughs> and I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And we'll see you on Monday. Bye, everyone.